Hey, good morning, girls. Happy Friday. Congratulations. We've made it to the end of our summer challenge. I was going to get confetti and other stuff so I can throw it and blow a little party whistle, and I just didn't make it into town. So, But congratulations. You have been part of a summer challenge for 45 days. Now, girls, in order to, to create a habit, to change things in our lives, it's 21 days. So you've gone 45, which means you've gone above and beyond what is required to create a new habit. Now the key is, is continuing that habit from here on out. Just because the summer challenge ends does not mean you stop. You need to daily be picking up your Bible, picking a verse, writing it down, picking out your keywords, looking them up at Strong's, study the Bible, and ask God, what does that verse mean for you today? Sometimes, sometimes a verse may not have a particular meaning and really resonate with where you're at for the day, but we need to start storing this stuff in our heart. And this is the only way to do it. Because, see, there's going to be a day in our time, ladies, that we may not be able to own a Bible that we may not be able to gather to go to Sunday church. We may not be able to gather for Bible studies. Who knows the way things are going out there. So we have to be prepared. And that's what God wants us. He wants us prepared. He wants us equipped. He wants us ready. We've covered so many areas over this 45-day challenge. Everything from mindset to body to spirit to our busyness. And it's just information for you to grow as a woman of God. But I challenge you today, do not stop. Precious girls, do not stop your pursuit of studying God's Word. You need to want God's Word as bad as whatever it is is at the top of your priority list you want. What is your thing you're into? Do you love to shop? Hot Fudge Sundays, are they like the bomb for you? Gotta have your cup of coffee. Gotta have your glass of tea. We gotta have our Jesus in our life. That's what this challenge has been about. This challenge has been about instilling consistency in God's Word. I've had some conversations recently with a couple of girls that have now decided they're too busy to plug into God's Word and being consistent with that. And my heart breaks and I pray for them because we should never be too busy to get into God's Word, ever. We should never be too busy to gather as women. All of this craziness around us girls is going to be there. But we've got to stop and pause for the most important thing in our life. And I really pray that through this summer challenge, you have realized how amazing God's Word is. And all it took was you to spend a few minutes in it each day. Reading it, studying it. Because what happens to our spirit, good morning Lydia, is we want more. When you start taking God's Word in on a consistent basis, and you spend that time in the morning with Him, you will actually crave Jesus as much as you crave that cup of coffee. Many women get up and they're like, if I don't get my coffee, you don't need to talk to me. Well, you know what, girls? If you don't get your Jesus in the morning, people shouldn't want to talk to you. We've got to make the main thing the main thing. And if you've missed the challenge, any of the 45 days, they are all in the thread. It's really kind of hard to find them here. But I think you can go to the tab that says videos. Or go over to the YouTube channel, which they're all listed in order. 
and you've got the challenge for the day, the scriptures there, everything is right there, easy to use. Keep going back to that. Pick those things that God is really trying to work on you with. But I challenge you today that just because our summer challenge is ending today, that your relationship with Christ, your diligence, your dedication, your commitment to study in His Word does not end today. 45 days, ladies. 21 days to create a habit. 7 days to break it. Do not miss your time in the Word with Jesus. If you want your life changed, if you want something better in your life, if you want to hear from God, we have to shut out the noise, the busyness, the crazy, those schedules that we create for ourselves. And we've got to put the importance back on Jesus. Our churches aren't teaching that no more. Our churches aren't teaching the importance of discipleship, of mentoring. They're all busy doing their programs for the next greatest thing and then wonder why things fall apart. We've got to put the main thing, the main thing. And at the end of these 45 days, you have to know that Jesus is the main thing. You have to remember, He gave everything for you and I. He died a painful death in our place. That's powerful, girls. And what's hard is, He died a painful death in our place. And yet, we treat Him as an afterthought. Do you ever think about that? Jesus died for you on that cross that dark Friday morning or dark Friday, I don't know the exact time it's not stated but Jesus died on that cross that day for the sins that you and I committed nothing that he did so that we didn't have to pay the price. So that when Jesus returns to take the church out, and the church means the people out of here, so that Satan can have his run of the world, more so than he's got now, we're taken out. All of that was done for us. And yet in our agendas, We've made God so unimportant. And it's something that I think if we stop and really think about the price that was paid for our salvation so that we could have eternity, so that we could have the Holy Spirit to help guide us through our life when we choose to listen. That price that was paid, girls, is far greater than anyone will ever pay. And yet, we treat Jesus, God, as an afterthought. If I got time, if there's an emergency, if I'm in a panic, instead of making him the main thing, it's time to make the main thing the main thing in our life. Because the priorities that we set will become our priority. I had somebody tell me that I've already got my priorities in order here and this is what's going on and I said where is your time with God in that? I'm not going to point it out, it's up to them to decide. They said I don't have time for that. I'm exhausted when I get up. I can't do this and I can't do that. And I responded back, what if Jesus said he was too busy to die for you and I? What if Jesus said he was too busy to pay our price? What if? So why are we making him an afterthought? It happens to all of us occasionally. I mean, there's going to be days that you just get busy and you get sidetracked and things happen. It's going to happen. We're human. 
but when it comes down to the basics and it comes down to everyday life, if you want to thrive as a woman of God, if you want to rise above all of the crap in our life, you must have a foundational relationship with Jesus Christ. If he is an afterthought, you will struggle more. You will find financial issues, emotional issues, physical issues. I could go on down the list. Live what you believe. And make the main thing the main thing. Easiest things in the world to do. Actually, the easiest things in the world to say, harder to do. Because we tend to be caught up in the world. But remember, Romans 12, 2 tells us to not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. The only way for our mind to be renewed is through God's word. Only way. I'm going to close you out with one verse. So when you sit there and you, you've listened to this and you're like, that's great, Robin. I'm glad that you think we all have time. And you've, you know, you do your little rant. You try to justify your schedule. I want you to remember Philippians 4.13. When people say they can't change what's going on in their life. They can't change the priorities. What if... I didn't do this for so-and-so, and what if I didn't do this, and I have to do this for my kid because otherwise they'll be mad at me. So what? Your kid's not supposed to be your best friend. You're the parent. They're the kid. It's great when they get older, but as a kid, they're the kid. Stop worrying about everyone else until your relationship with Christ is straight. Sorry. Tangent, right? Anyhow, but it's the truth. And if our relationship with Christ is not right, then all of that doesn't matter. Okay? Philippians 4.13, it says in there, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So when you're sitting there going, I can't do this, I can't make these changes, I can't fit them in, I don't know where to set them in my schedule, I don't get it. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If you really want that relationship, girls, and you really want it to be strong, ask God. Seriously, ask God. Show me, Lord, where I can place and make consistent to build my relationship with you. If we don't ask, we don't know. He's there to help us. The Holy Spirit is there as our helper. But we are so stinking stubborn that we just think we can do all of this on our own. And then we wonder why we sit at the end of the day exhausted, frustrated, angry, irritated, agitated, depressed. I can go on and on with what we become when we took our eyes off of God. Seriously, start with five minutes a day, ladies. When you get up in the morning, put your feet on the ground out of bed and thank God that you had a bed to sleep in. That you've got a floor, that your feet that you can walk on will support you. Ask God to show you. God, how do I get my focus on you? But we got to move intentionally in this relationship with Christ. It's not an afterthought. And I really pray that through this challenge, God has been speaking to your heart. Each of those verses that you got through the challenge were verses that were meant to challenge you. They were meant to strengthen you, to make you stronger, to build you up, to encourage you. To equip you to step out and touch the next woman. Our vision and our mission here is to reach one million women to thrive in their daily life. I personally cannot reach a million. But you and I together, a domino effect. The stronger you are as a Christian woman, the more you radiate Christ and people want to be around. 
as it, you radiate Christ and as you share that with other people, then you empower that other person who then becomes the next domino that will fall, touching the next one. We can reach the women. We can empower the woman. We can build each other up in a way that God is glorified, in a way that all they see is Jesus oozing out of our pores and wonder, how did you do that? Nothing brings more joy to my life when somebody that's been watching from a distance has come up and said, I want what you have. Why does that happen? Because I live what I believe most of the time. I mess up. I'm human. But girls, live what you believe and make the main thing the main thing. And know that you can do anything through Christ who strengthens you if you ask for his help. So I'm going to close our challenge with just letting you, just leaving with you to really consider to keep the habit going that we've done. Really should do it seven days a week, but if you can do it five days a week, God will be pleased. We've got, a make, got to make our relationship with Christ more than just Sunday morning church. We've got to invest the time. We've got to stop the busyness and the noise in our life. To plug in. To be accountable. To be mentored. To grow. To touch other lives. And the only way we're going to be able to do that is to make sure that our habit of being grounded in God's Word is solid. Heavenly Father, I just lift these ladies up to you today and we thank you, Lord, for their consistency to the 45-day challenge. And we pray, Lord, that habits have been formed now that will just be glorifying to you. I pray, Lord, for anybody new that's just kind of picked up in the middle of the challenge that they too will go and find the areas that they need to work on in their life to make you the main thing. I pray, Father, that every woman that listens to this recording, every woman that has been live with us this morning, that she will make the main thing the main thing. That she will quiet the noise in her life to spend that time with you. Oh, Father, we love that you're a living God and that you care for each one of us. That you sent your Son to die for each one of us so that we could have eternal life. Father, may we never forget that. May we never make you an afterthought. Father, help us to keep you the main thing in our life. In Jesus' name. All right, girls. Awesome. You made it. Yay. Um, through the 45 days. Now, what's going to happen next week? Right now, we still have the 31-day health challenge going. And what that is, is each day, we'll post a tip. Um, something towards healing the body, towards um, getting stronger, or whatever it may be. We're on day four, um, so there should be four other posts up here. Some of it's common sense stuff, some you may not know, some's an aha. But enjoy it. The 31 days, it's all going to be focusing on taking care of the shell that God gave us. Okay, remember, we're renting our body. Part of the cafe is we believe in a balance of all three. Healthy body, healthy mindset, healthy spirit. Spirit is your relationship with Christ. Mindset is your thinking. Body is the total body. It does not mean you're skinny. It means that you're healthy, you're good, you're strong, so that you can go out and do the things that God wants you to do. Then, starting next week, we will probably do our morning minutes um, probably twice a week. Because we've got the other challenge going. And then coming soon. Woo we're going to re-release the book Thrive. It's going to be a 6 by 9 so it's going to be a smaller copy. It's in final edits right now. I will make an announcement when that's ready. And there will be a new one coming out this fall for you girls. And we'll probably do a workshop and then we'll release the book. But it's going to be on Proverbs 31. And it's going to be the Proverbs 31 effect. So making what that is is making 
the the example of the Proverbs 31 woman attainable. Because what I do believe, girls, is God wrote the word to guide us, to lead us, to direct us. He did not write the Bible and give us his word filled with impossibilities. I firmly believe that everything in that Bible is possible for you and I if we really understand what it is. So I'm excited. I taught the Proverbs 31 effect just recently and the girls loved it and they all realized that most of them are already right there with what they're doing. So I'm excited. Can't tell you anymore. It'll be coming soon. Yay! In the fall. So there you go. Have a fabulous weekend. Enjoy the weekend. Spend your time with God every day. And I will check on you guys as we're going through. But lots of fun stuff happening here in the Thrive Cafe Thrive. My encouragement to you is invite some friends to come hang out. Invite your friends to the page. Let's get the page as a bigger reach so we can reach those million ladies. All right? And then you guys are part of the movement. All right, love you girls, and we will catch you on Monday. Bye.